or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, what I do know is that I have my fingers crossed that I've remembered to put this intro in black and white because this is the latest instalment of my photo inspiration collaboration series and I really wish I'd chosen an easier title to remember than that but I am super super pleased to say it is also the latest outing of the bitches of Eastwick Anya Nona and of course yours truly so if you want to find out exactly what our inspiration is this time whose turn it was to choose that inspiration and more importantly what this looks like in glorious technicolour and then my dear you you are in precisely the right place grab a drink Grab a snack, sit back, and enjoy. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Right, you will have seen from the intro, which hopefully I remember to do in black and white. This is another instalment of my photo inspiration collaboration series with um, my bitches of Eastwick, Anya and Nona. And I am so excited. It's been far too long since we've done one of these. I've just had so many collabs lately. It's been lovely. I love when people want to collab. It's so much fun. So, it was Nona's turn to choose the photo. And she's chosen one which I think a lot of people are going to know. If I say to you, Starry, starry night, paint your palettes blue and grey. Yep, you're right, Vincent van Gogh, Starry Night. And that was my appalling version of the song called Vincent. Don't ask me who sang it, my brain's gone <laughs> right now. I'm sure it will come back to me at some point. Then again, it might not. Who knows. But, there is the picture. Now, although the song says paint your palettes blue and grey, to me, that's blues and very very deep purples and yellows so I am yet to try my sample beauty hydrographic palette however I do believe it's got plenty of blues in here one two three three definite blues Sorry, three definite blues, two kind of indigo-y blues, and then two purples, and these green ones I'm not really going to worry about too much. Um, so I'm going to give that a go with my blues, and then Blush Tribe, Neon Dreams, Loose Pigment, Ruhina, because any chance to bung a bit of neon on me? Nature's girl at heart, let's be honest, it's going to happen. Um, I do have a non affiliated code with Blush Tribe, all of my codes are listed in the description below. Um, face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd, and primed. And on my face so far, on my eyes rather, let me zoom you in, all that I have on them, yoink, hello is what I've been using ever since I got the sample pot and just to show you look I have ordered a, another pot so that I don't run out this is the uh, shade cotton in the Chrome and pebble bases um, they've got a number of skin tone colours and then they've got a very deep chocolate and a very deep black so whatever colours you're looking for will absolutely work uh, again got a discount code with them that's listed below I think that one's non-affiliated I think I don't know 
If I hadn't said it's affiliated, so I'm guessing it's not. Right. Now, I always, because this is a teaching channel, I don't go as in-depth with the teaching when I'm doing one of these photo collabs. But I do, on every one of my films, talk you through eye shapes because it's really, really important. Now, I've got deep set eyes. I'm, also, I'm starting to hear them being referred to as double lidded eyes. Now, I have very similar issues to people with hooded lids in that I get transference of shimmer from the mobile lid to the static lid. If I'm cutting the crease, I can't just cut the socket, I have to go onto the upper lid. And uh, even with glitter glue, I end up with a bare patch, usually right through the crease there. Now, a lot of people with deep set eyes like myself mistakenly believe or are mistakenly told they have hooded lids. But the procedure for dealing with hooded lids and the procedure for dealing with deep set eyes are very, very different, which is where you could have been having some issues. Now, if when I look straight ahead with my brows relaxed, you can see from inner corner to outer edge all of my mobile lid. Not a lot of it, but you can see it. So I don't have a hooded lid. It's only if your upper lid completely covers right down to your lash line, part or all of your mobile lid, that you have a full or a half hooded lid, or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. You can still follow my tutorials. All you need to do, get a brush like this or a pencil brush and just sketch out on your static lid a new crease so you are creating a mobile lid on your static lid. I always put the deepest colour through the crease so then when people are talking to you from a distance it will fool, fool the eye into believing that that part of the eye is further back and will increase the the optical illusion that you have got a crease there but further up. Obviously that's going to reduce the space between your new crease and your brow so just use slightly smaller brushes than I do. Now, if I cover my mobile lid this side and then close my eye, you can see I've got as much lid again that folds back in that you can't see. If I cover the upper lid you can see again, I've got a huge chunk of lid there that folds back in. That's what a deep set eye is, that's what a double eyelid is. And that's the main difference between the two. Right, I want to start putting some colour on my face. Now, uh, if you've never watched my photo inspiration series before, uh, it's very simple, there are very few rules. Those rules are you can only use colours in the photo. You don't have to use all of them, but you cannot add new ones in. Hence why I can't use the greens in this palette. Um, it's entirely up to you how you choose to interpret the photo. Uh, it's all down to how you view it. And like I said, it could be that when you look at it, you don't see purples, but in the deepest parts of the blue, I do see it transitioning almost to a super, super deep purple. If you don't see that, that's fine. Monitors are different, our eyes are different. I'm blind in one eye, so there's a very good chance that I'm seeing colours slightly different from other people. So this is all about taking the colours that you see and transferring it onto the face. And it's about showing how even using exactly the same inspiration picture can produce such radically different eye looks, at least so far. There's only once so far, and I think this is about episode 21 now of my series, and there's only been once that we've had similar eye looks and even then they weren't exactly the same. So. I am going to start off, this is, in, I've got it listed, I've got a few uh, films listed in my description box. Uh, one of them is about the antiperspirant primer that I use, and another one is about brush recommendations. This is one of the AliExpress brushes that I mention, and this is Tapered Blending Brush number 6. So I'm going to start off by going into Tidal in this palette, which is the lightest blue, 
there is an awful lot of kick up in this palette by the way I don't know if you can see that that doesn't worry me because it just means I can dip into that loose pigment when I want to add more colour in now I've not set my eye base because fortunately this crow and pebble one isn't sticky or tacky it feels as if it's set but it grabs colour as if it hasn't I'm just gonna pop this on I try and leave sort of three or four mils between the top colour and the brow unless I'm doing an editorial look and I do struggle sometimes here and here because of creasing and on this eye you can see I've got super deep creasing where it's pulled around at the ophthalmic and they're trying to work out why I wasn't seeing properly as a child deep joy, deep creases so, bitches of Eastwick, who are we? we are Anya, also known as Pink Sweets and we are Nona, also you known as hashtag my so called life 1977 now um, we'd collabed individually together and Anya and Nona had collabed individually but we all got sort of we all got treated rather badly by a larger influencer on YouTube and I'm not going to mention them because I don't want to give them the publicity um, so we all decided basically screw you missus we don't need you we don't collab with people because they've got I mean both Anya and Nona have got way more subscribers than me but that's not why I collab with them I mean you know one person that I collab with first time I collab with them I think they had like seven subscribers I know Anya's done the same she's subscribed with put to people that have got you know eight subscribers twelve subscribers five subscribers we don't look at that we look at the individual person and their personality and what they bring in terms of makeup not even necessarily that they're highly skilled but you know enthusiastic amateurs even um, you know we just we love makeup and we love sharing the love of makeup and where the bigger beauty guru world has got so nasty and backstabby and really not very nice at all and they, they only sort of they collab for clout rather than collabing because they like the person they're collabing with um, we don't do that we're trying to bring positivity back into the bring the beauty chan the, the beauty world back to what it was you know and what it should be right, I'm gonna go into Dory which is uh, a deeper blue I feel like I should be singing ah, a deeper shade of blue but that's a step song and good lord woman. that's a really nice pigment actually I keep sitting back you'll notice that particularly when I'm doing the other eye and again I'm not worried about this bit on here um, that's part of the transference that you get happy days um, Fibro fogs kicked in again. I've completely forgotten what I was saying. Oh yeah, I, I always sit back and check because obviously your eyes are not symmetrical unless you're James Charles and you Photoshop them. Um, so it's more important to make sure that the shape and the way they look are symmetrical rather than the shapes being exactly the same. So I'm just blending dory into tidal just to soften the edge between the two I wasn't sure if I was going to do this editorial style or blended but I think I'm going to go blended Anya does some amazing editorial looks I mean she really has she that girl can make a palette sing I tell you um, but yeah so we all sort of we all bonded together over this particular beauty influencer who 
things they're really nice and behind the scenes are an absolute grade A Regina George gotta stay um, family friendly because my god kids watch this the worst you'll get from me is a bloody, a bitch, and occasionally a shit. Um, even though I know they use and probably hear much worse than that at school. They won't hear it from their auntie Ange. Yes, we bonded together, and I'd literally, earlier on in the evening, just watched Witches of Eastwick. So I, I suggested we should call ourselves the Bitches of Eastwick. As in babes in total control of themselves, or herself rather. Um, and so we've, we've bonded and we are the bitches of Eastwick. And uh, it's really nice, I've made some really beautiful friends on, on this. Um, I started doing this because I was really frustrated when I first started getting into makeup because the majority of tutorials aren't really tutorials, they don't come in close like this. Um, they speed up the blending, they don't, they'll do one eye and do the other eye off camera and there's no, there's no real teaching element anymore, it's all about showing off their skill rather than teaching you how to create that look yourself. Um, and I just, I really wanted to, to bring that element back to YouTube and bring teaching back because you know we not everyone knows everything you know and if you are a complete beginner some of these tutorials can be so daunting particularly when they skip steps out and just expect you to know what they've done you know so Right, I'm just going down to a smaller brush. This is my Morphe M562. And I'm going to go into Atlantis, which is a really beautiful sort of indigo -y blue. I think, I think denim jeans. And I'm really going to deepen up through here with this one. Obviously, the majority of the sky is this deeper blue. But as I said, it's all about how you want to interpret the photo. And I wanted to add some of the lighter blues in rather than make it a super, super deep, dark look. I've got to be honest, it's the first time I've used this palette from Sample Beauty. I'm really, really liking how well it's blending. Because blues are one of the most difficult colours to do. Yeah, so, Anya does amazing, amazing editorial looks. Nona is starting to get into colour. She's sort of... That's out of her comfort zone. Um, but when she does experiment with colour she produces some beautiful looks she has a natural instinct with what colours will work with each other you know I think I'm going to take that blue right up the outside I quite like that take that on the edge there um, Maybe I'll do a bit of a... Oh yeah, I like that. Regular viewers will know that I very much make up a look as I go. Unless I'm recreating a specific look, um, I very much make it up as I go, really. I just do whatever I fancy. You can see here now what I mean about that deep creasing. Giving me hassles on this upper corner. That's why I don't normally use very deep ones up here, but just I felt like it today. And if you feel like doing something, that's the time to experiment because let's face it, 
it's just makeup. It washes off. You know? Oh, why did I go with that one? Oh, I'll clear to the brown. Okay. So this is what I was saying about different shapes both sides but to give the same illusion I'm loving this palette yeah Nona is oh, well both she and Anya are some of the nicest people I've ever met I say met I mean obviously we've not actually met in person I would love to I would love to sort of you know jump on a plane head out there, hire a huge sort of 1952 caddy, I think it was the 52 ones with the big um, thin rear lights, hire one of those and just do a road trip around America with hubby and just go and visit all the people I've been collabing with. Um, I'd love to do that. And Anya and Lona would absolutely be some of the people that I've never seen. I think if we lived closer, we would probably every day be in each other's houses, uh, you know, over the kitchen table, drinking coffee, showing off the new makeup we've got, putting the world to rights, probably filming together. But um, they're both very kind, caring souls, you know, they, there's not a bad bone in either of them, at all. But for me saying I wasn't going to do an editorial look, it's kind of gone a little bit that way, hasn't it? <coughs> if you're doing this and you've raised your crease up, where I'm going through my crease here, you just follow the line that you've put down. And if you've got deep set eyes like I have, all you need to do is with your eyes shut, with your eyes open, just make sure you can just see the colour just above. As you can see, it's actually quite a bit above my actual crease line. But I just want it to show above my mobile lid. I really don't mind about fallout because I do my base afterwards now. I used to do it first, but since I've been playing with more colours, I just I tend to do it afterwards now. But yeah, I mean I started my channel to be a teaching channel. But obviously in collabs it's more about the collab than it is teaching but I do still give you tips and whatnot. if you heard that thump it was next door they're having some building works done hopefully the camera didn't pick up on it but it is quite a good it does pick up on quite a lot of stuff but I don't think it's going to right I really I'm starting to feel like Mr Spock from um, Star Trek that is completely illogical, Captain. Okay, if, if this is the first time to my channel, you'll kind of get used to this. My brain wanders off in all kinds of different directions. Right, I'm going to dip into Anemone, which I've always found quite difficult to say. And I'm going to run this underneath deeper blue through the crease. So anemone is under Atlantis. And I'm just gonna continue that kind of flowy line that I've got going. Just do 
bring it across onto the outer edge of the mobile lid. And just run what's left of the brush up and down. I'm really liking this. I do this. You'll, if you've watched any of my films, you'll know that I do this. I'll start doing a look and then I'll be chatting away to you as if you're sitting across the table from me. And uh, the look will just wander off. Do its own thing. But that's one of the best things about makeup. You can be creative, you can be expressive, you can do whatever you want with makeup. You can express yourself in so many different ways. Do not stretch your lid like this unless you have super deep creases like I do. Otherwise, you will have super deep creases like I do. But it's like, you know, unlike hair colour, which of course is, is another way of expressing yourself, but unlike with hair colour, with makeup you can be a different person every day. You know, you can be Mr Spock one day, you could be Pastel Princess the next day, you know, it's just... I love the flexibility of makeup and how you can just create so many fun looks with it, you know, There's so many different things. And I absolutely adore both of the girls. Um, I'm so excited to see what looks they've done. I know that Anya wants to try this, um, this palette. This, um, this sample beauty one. I think she wants to try all of their palettes, but I just... This was the only one really that called me, because I've got quite a few rainbow palettes, so I didn't really... I thought if I buy the rainbow palette, I'll probably use it on here a couple of times, and then I'll just go back to using my favourites, which, I've got to be honest, uh, Slush 2. If I want a rainbow palette, I'll just head straight for Slush and Slush 2. Because um, that is now out, folks. Oof, I love this. Look look how full this pigment pot is. Put it down before you spill it everywhere, Ange, because I'm a klutz. Now, long term viewers will know I always say to you never go into a pigment with a wet brush. Pressed pigment. Loose pigment, but go in with a wet brush. So, this is a Studio 5 London brush, it's just a pencil brush. I like this because there's not too much flexibility, so it's going to give me very controlled, hopefully controlled, placement of the pigment. I'm just going to completely wet that, and then what I do, I always sort of twist it round in my hand like this to dry the ferrule off which is this bit here so that you don't get any moisture going down and loosening the glue that's holding the bristles in and I'm being very very careful dipping into this pigment look at that right. so that you can see what I'm doing and I can see what I'm doing I'm going to use a little mirror down here for this eye obviously if I close this eye, this one's blind, not much makeup's going to happen. So I'm just going to... Oh, wow. Oh, this is lovely. This is much brighter than I was expecting. I think I've chosen the wrong brush for this. It's going on a little bit clumpy. Yes, change the brush edge. I'm going to go in with... This is the number two brush from the AliExpress set. Initially I'm just going to 
go in dry and get rid of the clumping from that previous brush. That was just me using the wrong brush. But unlike most YouTubers, I leave my mistakes in. So, let's wet this brush, shall we? Dry the ferrule off. Dip it into the pigment. Tap it back off. Oh. And that's better. I might actually continue to not wet the pigment again while it's on the brush. Okay, it doesn't like layering over this Starry Night palette. I've used the pigment before. Well, I've used other pigments. I've used the, the Angie one named after me. And this is exactly the same consistency. So there's no reason why. I'm going to go in with it dry and see if that makes a... Yeah, okay. It just didn't like... I didn't like going in wet on top of that pigment. Is that my front door? Let me go and check. I am back. It was my door. Right, you can see what I mean now about transference up onto the upper lid. But, I'm going to make a feature of it. So I'm going to use a really, really fine brush. This is all in the deeps, D-E-E-T-S, goodness only knows where I got it from, genuinely don't know. So I'm going to wet the brush and then dry the brush, because this definitely seemed to prefer going on dry over the top of this particular, over these Sample Beauty colours. I'm going to... Emphasize the stripe of yellow going up. Um, I cleared this off with some micellar water because it was annoying me. In case you're wondering. And I'm putting this on, but I'm kind of blending it into the blue. So it's kind of going a little bit green, but, you know. Colour theory, Ange, blue and yellow makes green. Well done, love. I'm just kind of swirling it up and out because of all the swirls on, on his painting. Right. I've made such a mess with this pigment, folks. Honestly. I am klutz, though. People who know me know this. I've got yellow neon powder everywhere. So let's... Yeah, this one seems to want to go on over the sample beauty pigment anyway. It seems to prefer going on dry. It's okay, it's a learning curve. Yeah. Much, much better. So obviously there's something in the sample beauty um formulation that doesn't like wet pigment going on top of it. So bear that in mind folks if you're using the Sample Beauty one. 
Now this one's dried out a bit, I can match it up. So we get equal intensity both sides. Oh yes, 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 yes. yes. This is the look I was going for. This is not the droid you were looking for. Name film. Like anybody doesn't know that film. This is not the droid you are looking for. Uh, I'm cleaning the brushes off on a clean washcloth, by the way. I prefer that to a um, colour switch now because I just. Uh, I just find that it's gentler on the bristles, especially if you have natural hair bristles. I've only got a couple of natural hair bristle brushes but I have noticed that they do actually um, react better to being cleaned with uh, a dry washcloth rather than going into the colour switch. blink a few times so I get my similar to how when I do a cut crease I put the concealer on and blink a few times just frown and blink and it gives you your line as to where it's going to transfer up to and I took it into about there didn't I so I'm just going to smudge this around And get the shape similar and then just really softly buff the yellow so it does go that kind of limey greeny sort of thing. I actually quite like that. I do like that. Can we get any loose pigment off? Ooh. Right, I'm going to pause you while I try and clear up some of the mess I've made here. Um, I'll put some foundation on and I'll be back. You're going to see me instantly. I will see you next time I press the record button. I am back. Right. I'm going to grab this flat top brush that we discussed earlier. And I'm going to go into a mixture of Anemone and Atlantis. Okay. And I'm going to run that down the edge. And along all the way under the lower lash line. Yes, I had a boopsie there. But we'll just call that happy little accident, a la Bob Ross. And I'm going to buff this all the way along. You know, normally I stop about two thirds of the way along, but I'm going a bit editorial today. So, now this brush I love, it's flat top but it's chunky. It's great for blowing out the lower lash line. It was the brush in the Tarte Graveyard Girl uh, collaboration, the Swamp Queen palette. And I'm going to go into. Um, I think I'm going to go into Ursula, 
which is a shimmerier purple just to mainly for the name I've got to be honest I love Ursula and I'm just going to use that just to buff all the way along just soften that line slightly now if you look at the Starry Night picture it's obviously of the town and you see the spire uh, if I can I'll stick a small version of it up here somewhere you see the spire sort of spindling up through the town and I kind of want to recreate that somehow but I'm going to do it a bit differently and this could make the look or break the look this is a Yanjina liquid eyeliner I got it off of uh, bring you in close you can see Yanjina one end is a normal felt tip eyeliner the other end is a star stamp Test it on the back of my hand. Okay. Because it is starry night. And I am going to start from this outer corner. And I'm going to start building that spire. With stars and then run it off into my hairline. Okay, I'm happy with that. Hmm, I'm also going to pop a star at the start of each brow and on the inner corner like so okay well for a blended smooth wearable look it's gone very me hasn't it really let's let's be honest here it's it's gone very me right i'm going to grab that tiny wee brush again from the all in the deeps and I'm grabbing the Ofra Nikki Tutorials highlighter in Space Baby because it's the white with the blue shift and I'm going to very very carefully so I don't ruin the star pop some of this just on the inner corner here just to brighten up because we all naturally have a darker area just where our eye meets our nose so it's always good to add a bit of highlight there but I don't want to ruin I suppose really I should have done the highlight before I did the star if you're doing this do the highlight before the star this is a ridiculously old lip brush that I bought off of eBay about 10 years ago. There's no one I bought it. And I'm going to use that just to add a bit of highlight under the edge of my brow. Okay, right, I'm going to pause you one last time while well, I bung some more of this highlight everywhere uh, and I'll be back you, you probably noticed that I've taken the blush a lot higher up the side because I was having an 80s moment and it, it was fun so I'll see you right now hello I am back 
Okay, the mascara was Essence Maximum Definition Volume Mascara with a Flexa Bubble Brush. And the lipstick is a Maybelline Matte in Beige Babe number 983 because I basically wanted the eyes to be the absolute focus and obviously the Nikki Tutorials eye for highlighter everywhere so I'm going to pop the picture back up there again of Starry Night well, what do you think? my interpretation of a Vincent van Gogh Starry, starry night Paint your palette blue and grey and I really should have taken the time to research who sang that, but nope. It's probably going to be somebody really obvious like John Denver. Oh, was it John Denver? Do you know what? I think it might have been. Did my brain just do something? Ooh. Anywho, tell you what, just in case it was John Denver, return of the hat. No, because it distracts from the eyes. So, this is my interpretation of Starry Night. What do you think? Okay, I know it's not exactly the look you would do when you want to go shopping and go and pick up the groceries, unless, of course, you, you, know, you particularly want to scare small children. Um... I've got to be honest, love, love this palette, looking forward to trying it again. Um, I will do a proper review of it, but I just, it was perfect for this look today, so super, super happy with that. Right. Cody Airspan gets everywhere, doesn't it? An explosion in the talcum factory. So, if you are one of my 4F babies, um, please double check you're still subscribed. Because YouTube is still unsubscribing people. It's absolutely crazy. Seriously, absolutely crazy. Um, it's driving me crackers, to be quite honest. Uh, so please double check you are still subscribed and that you've got the notification bell rung and that you've chosen all notifications. And I think there's now a third bloody step you have to go through as well. Never mind just liking the channel means that you want to see what they're doing. YouTube make you jump through hoops, don't they? Anywho, so if you're one of my 4F babies, please go across and check out Anya and Nona's films and see exactly what looks they have done to interpret this picture. Which palettes they've used, whether they've done anything similar, I very much doubt it. I wasn't even planning on doing this when I started. I was going to do a nice blue smoky eye with a pop of yellow in the corners and maybe a star somewhere. I got carried away. It's makeup. It's not hurting anybody. Right. Um, as I said, if you're one of my 4F babies, please go and check out Anya and Nona's channels. Uh, their films are linked below in the description box to make it so much easier for you. And please go show them the same love and support that you offer me in my comments boxes. If, however, you are here from Anya and Nona's channel, hi, hello, welcome. Uh, I'm not always this nutty, sometimes I'm worse, uh, sometimes I'm better. Uh, this is probably a pretty good average though. Uh, my mind, because of my fibro, and chronic pain and general uh, inbuilt nuttiness to be quite frank uh, wanders all over the show I do eventually get to the point but very much wander around the houses to get you there but I have been told I have a soothing voice so hopefully you have enjoyed this and maybe you want to check out another couple of my films Maybe even you want to subscribe and ring my bell, ring my bell. 
it's far too hot in my kitchen. I am singing like I'm a cabaret star, and I really, really, really need to go and get a coffee. Right, that is it for me for another day. Sincerely hope you've enjoyed this, and all that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.